So ladies and gentlemen, now welcome to our video of transit. My God, what's going on? Hell has frozen over. So that's why I'm now making this video after enormous, enormous demand to make this video of Rahu being in the nakshatra of Ardra currently in the sky. And Rahu is going to be in the nakshatra of Ardra between the last few weeks all the way to like April of 2020 and then it will move into Mriksira nakshatra. So Rahu is in Ardra nakshatra. Now if you were just to look at Rahu in Ardra. See, many of us, including me, we already know what Ardra Nakshatra is. It is the Nakshatra, which is a form of Shiva known as Rudra, who is the original medicine man. Like literally Rudra made medicines and fed people and healed people. Okay, But this is known as the Aghori. Ardra is the Aghori, is the Aghori form of Shiva, like who goes to Shamshan Ghat and puts on the uh, ashes of, you know, burnt humans, which is to purify oneself. It's actually a scientific process as to why someone would rub the ash on their body. Is it actually, it's actually to purify your aura. It's not like some uh, deviant form of Tantra. But you got to understand one thing, the triggering of the wild side of Ardra. Because Ardra people are usually very calm. Ardra people are not like going crazy about everything. Sure, they're very animated in their form. They're uh, very dramatic in their approach to certain things. But usually they're calm. What triggers that? The other Grahas have to come in and trigger this Rudra, this, this wolf that will howl and scream, okay? And that's exactly what's happening right now till January 12th, 13th. Why? Because Saturn, Saturn from the sign of Sagittarius aspects, the sign of Gemini where Rahu is currently transiting in Ardra Nakshatra. So this is where the trigger comes into play. Where Saturn, you got to understand, is a rebellious planet, rebellious graha. And it's looking at an outcast planet, outcast shadow graha, Rahu. And because of that aspect, it triggers, it triggers this wild side of Rahu. Meaning, um, because Saturn is a rebellion person, there is usually going to be in the communicative consciousness of people to rebel against something, to rebel against a system, to just not take it anymore. And even in personal life, people will just be like, that's it. I'm done with this and I'm going to destroy this. I don't want this. Like, for example, a person may, you know, uh, suddenly break up with their boyfriend or girlfriend suddenly throw their things out say i'm done with this like it's kind of like a built-up built-up that occurs and all you need is a small trigger and suddenly everything explodes and so now the trigger has been active because of saturn aspect on rahu and rahu as you know naturally rahu is a bhogakarka rahu wants to give rahu wants to you know do things in Ardha Nakshatra, Ardha is a Nakshatra which is ruled by Rahu. Okay, so Rahu feels quite comfortable in Ardha. It's like an Aghori. You're telling an Aghori to go out there and put ashes on their body. They'll be like, sure. Okay, I do that every day. You take a normal human being and say, go put ashes on your body. They will resist. They will hesitate. They will try to run away from it. So what happens with Rahu in Ardra is that, and you got to understand this, Moon in Ardra is very different with Rahu in Ardra. Moon in Ardra cannot take this, this wild explosion of emotions. 
For them, they cannot take the sadness because they know with sadness follows rage. With Rahu in Ardra, Rahu is like, it, I am supposed to do this. I am supposed to clean things. I am supposed to have a clean slate. I am supposed to destroy this because of the fact a new thing needs to come in. But because Saturn aspects Rahu from Sagittarius, it does it in a very straightforward, harsh, judgmental way. One will make a judgment. One will do things in a very crude manner to clean something, to take care of something. And especially in this time period, you will see a major theme of health playing out. Major theme of health playing out. People will seek natural medicine more than allopathic medicine. People will seek, the, like, and, and I'm talking about like in large quantity, because we're talking about a mundane transit. We're not looking at an individual chart where I'm going to have to look at the Ashtakvarka because you got to understand, if you're going to judge a transit of Rahu or any planet, you have to look at the Ashtakvarga. You have to look at the Ashtakvarga to see what score is being given, the total score upon the house that Rahu is transiting, or what score Mercury is giving to the house that Rahu is transiting because it's in the sign of Mercury. And obviously, if you do not know if you what kind of a score you have on your Ashtakvarga, you can check out the link here and get your report from the shop section with option 5 and beyond. And so it'll tell you exactly how this Rahu will behave because yes, Rahu energy can be very wild and very um, uh, not destructive in a way, but it, it, it wants to clean things out rapidly. And usually what happens is a person takes a stance due to the fact Saturn is looking at Rahu. If Saturn wasn't looking at Rahu, uh, people won't be behind towards taking a stance. Now people are trying to take a stance against authority. Stand against something. Why? Because an Ardhara person will, you will notice, will always take a stance against their father. So now what happens is a lot of population and people take a stance against government because government is like a metaphor of father. And because of this Saturn's aspect upon Rahu, a person will really become very harsh, very straightforward with their communication with everything and everyone. But specifically in an individual chart, whichever house is transiting, you're really going to become this Rudra, this Shiva. Shiva just says one thing, but is that one thing that can cut, cut through things. It can cut through things. And... With this particular Rahu, usually a person or group of people, especially when this is occurring in a Moksha triangle. So see which house Rahu is transiting. Moksha triangle in astrology is the 12th house, 4th house, 8th house. When Rahu is transiting these house points with the aspect of Saturn, a person wants to break away from civilization. Person wants to break away from their regular life. And they're looking for something wild. They're looking for something exotic. They're looking for something in nature. But if Rahu is transiting your trinal house, known as a Dharma house, which is the first house, fifth house, ninth house. This is the period one will rebel against Dharma because they want to set in a new Dharma in their life, a new path that they want to walk on in their life. Suddenly a, a person would want to get rid of the education that they're learning, wants to leave some educational organization, religious organization in this time. One wants to completely change how they look. Like somebody may even have color hair. If Rahu is transiting in the Lagna, and especially if like Ketu is there, because Ketu is here, Saturn is there, one will just sporadically want to change their hairstyle, want to change their color of the hair. So one wants to change their Dharma. 
One is not looking to escape because of the moksha houses. One looking to change what is there as their path. And this is especially strong due to the fact Saturn aspects Rahu. If it's an Artha, if Rahu is transiting the Artha triangle, the second house, sixth house, tenth house, naturally a person becomes very destructive with their finances. A person suddenly may make bad decisions on career choices. A person may want to sporadically get rid of what has been bothering them with their ability to make money to bring in something new. But again, good and bad decisions depends on two things. The Ashtak Varga and the Dasha that you're going through. Because if the Dasha is being supported while Rahu is receiving good Ashtak Varga points, then it is obviously going to bring a change that you're going to welcome instead of the change that you're going to resist. And especially in the Artha houses, people will be having, certain people will actually have a very exotic taste suddenly. Like instead of like, you know, eating regular food, they want to eat exotic foods, exotic meats. Like instead of eating chicken or mutton, one wants to eat elk, caribou, bison. One wants to eat some foreign foods. One will suddenly be like, I want to try this that I have never done before. Because the Aghori in you, the Aghori in you will be inclining you towards, will bringing situation where, oh, what is this? I have never had this before. Oh my God. Let me try it. I know I wouldn't have before, but for some reason I want to try that right now. And one of the other things you want to understand is that by November... Jupiter is going to be coming in Sagittarius. So now you have Ketu, Jupiter, and Saturn in Sagittarius. And especially two of the planets are influencing Rahu. Now do not think. See, this is where you have to understand the complexity of Jyotish and astrology. Do not think that just because Jupiter came in Sagittarius, suddenly now Rahu is going to start behaving great. First of all, Rahu is not in the sign of Jupiter. So Jupiter is not looking at its own sign that is going to start protecting it. This particular conjunction of Saturn, the rebel and the guru coming together can actually give a very fatalistic thinking to people. People can have such opinions where it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. They're going to give that opinion. They're going to give that philosophy. The governments out there will take actions that are going to be very, um, very fatalistic in nature, pretty much. This is not some easy aspect to get. Because you got to understand, Jupiter is not always great. When Jupiter is with certain planets, especially Ketu, who is completely a moksha karka and wants to reject things, wants to just completely get rid of things, like wants to cut things with a sword. And Saturn that has its own judgment onto things, own opinions onto things, own rebellious nature onto things. That's where Guru is right now. And because Jupiter is going to be in the sign of Sagittarius and Nakshatra of Mula, what do you think is going to happen? It's a destructive energy, Mula. Mula is like black hole. You, a, a black hole is coming towards an Aghori. So till January, until Saturn leaves and Jupiter has his domain free for him to deal with his own thing instead of getting these feedbacks and judgmental opinions from Saturn. It is going to be a, even more of a rebellious time. It is going to be even a, like especially in um, Dharma and Moksha houses. Um, People will become, go, will go to extreme. People will try to go to extreme to attain like some spiritual knowledge. People will be making decisions that can, you know, especially on their dasha can really change the course of their life. Now, one of the places 
that this particular Jupiter thing helps, especially in Artha, is in research. There could be discoveries happening. One can discover something by destroying something. Then when you have Rahu in the Kama houses, Kama house is the house of desire. These are one of those, Kama houses are very tricky in nature, but also very much desired by nature. Because Kama is the desire. One has a desire to communicate, one has a desire to uh, be in a union ship and one has a desire to gain. And Rahu is a natural bhoga karka. And here in Ardra Nakshatra, it can give things in a wild manner. Like suddenly people can make decision to just travel. No planning, nothing, just traveling. Why? Because they will try to rebel against something. They will try to travel because they need to make sure that this thing does not take place or this thing takes place. And especially with Jupiter and Saturn together after November, one thing you got to be careful of is people who are having this Kama Rahu is to be careful of social media and what you post on social media. Because I know everybody likes to give their opinion. Everybody wants to comment at places. How I, well, I like giving my opinion on things. But you always have to have that awareness that because of this, I can say something so wild that it can go viral and it can completely ruin me for life or ruin my reputation for a long while. Unless you're using some anonymous ID, fine, you might get away with it. But if you're using your own name, your own image, I mean, you, you people don't understand whether bad transit or good transit doesn't matter. I mean, one stupid thing can brand you for life because this is like this is like black mirror of you know a netflix series where one bad thing will follow you till death so this is why you want to also keep your anger in check because kama houses are air houses they're natural air houses gemini libra and aquarius here one's anger can go out of control because of the fact they are dealing with social media, dealing with their relationship or dealing with an organization. And it can prove to be quite fatal too in certain cases if somebody who has a little bit of a loose screw will not mind shooting up the place, which is now a normal thing in US. Because it is Shiva trying to clear, now, clear out energy. So you gotta understand one thing. All the bad people, all the serial killers, all the murderers, they're actually, <laughs> they're actually the soldiers of Varuna. Varuna has a long list of murderers, thieves, robbers, killers, terrorists that are being born and there are going to be more are going to be coming in because of the fact it needs to clear things out. There's always a purpose even for the worst human being. You got to understand that nothing happens without a deeper purpose and a deeper scientific truth, which we might be too stupid to think. We think that, oh, where's God and why is it that God is not helping us? Or, you know, who do we pray to calm this thing down? Well, it's a part of a mechanism of this engineering of universe, which is doing its part, doing its duty. And Ardra and Purva, Ashada and Mula, boy, you're talking about a strategic, destructive force. So this is where, because of these air signs, it can push those things into a wild area. And obviously, if Rahu is in a Kama house, it is naturally going to be controlling the air houses in an individual chart. So please be careful of that. Once Saturn leaves, then you will see the much more calmer effect coming in. Then you will be able to, then naturally the general public will be able to control things. But at this particular point, 
it is like Shiva's trying to rain down because it needs to clear certain things out. Whether it's our personal life, whether it's the mundane world. Things are trying to clear themselves out, but they're not clearing themselves out in a calm manner. Like it would if, let's say, you know, Rahu was in Pushya or, uh, you know, Rahu was in Revati. You're talking about destruction that comes in where a tornado cleans everything out. And then you can rebuild. Fine. We're going to build, rebuild this town. But it, it didn't happen off a scheduled demolition. It happened off a sudden tornado that came in. That's what you got to remember. Okay. So guys, this was my analysis of uh, Rahu in uh, Ardra Nakshatra. If you're new to my channel, subscribe below. And if you don't know where your Rahu is and all the other astrological details, for that, check out the links here. Check out my full astrological report, including my consultations, my books on astrology, and link to my academy, Maga Vedic Astrology Academy, where I'm almost now done with the lessons. And after two, three lessons, I'm, I'll be finished. And then whoever joins, you can just see all A through Z lessons for life. So anyway, uh, we'll see you later.